It is great to be here with our Secretary of Education, Jacob Oliva, Speaker Shepard, and our bipartisan partners from the legislature, including the Chair of House Education Committee, Representative Evans, the Chair of Senate Education Committee, Committee, Senator Jane English isn't able to be here today, but has been a close partner in this effort from the beginning. We're also joined by Robert Fagan, Chairman of the Board at the Arkansas School for the Blind and Visually Impaired and Arkansas School for the Deaf, and staff members and parents from both schools. We are all gathered here to announce something that I believe is long overdue for a campus and students that are just a few blocks from right here a comprehensive plan for ASB and ASD that I hope will finally deliver the services that visually and hearing impaired Arkansans deserve. I've made no secret that I want to be known as our state's education governor. That applies to everyone. The process involving these two schools started late last year when I toured the campus with a group of lawmakers and staff. We met with some of the most dedicated educators I've ever had the privilege of meeting. We saw students for whom these schools are the only option for a quality education. We heard from parents and advocates who have worked for decades to improve this historic landmark establishment. All that stood in stark contrast with the campus itself, crumbling exteriors, leaking and drafty interiors, a vast piece of land overseen by just a handful of staff with significant security, health, and safety concerns. To say I was speechless would be an understatement. These two schools were built as a promise to deaf, blind, and visually impaired Arkansans, a promise that they deserved a quality education just as much as any other student. Sadly, for far too long, our state has failed to keep its word. We're changing that. Today, we're announcing a plan that will vastly change that. After touring the school's campus, I gathered many of the lawmakers and advocates that you see here today, and we all worked together to build out this vision. As we learned from a survey of the school community, there were three main priorities, keeping the campus at its current location, providing more resources for deaf and blind students beyond the Little Rock campus, and addressing the critical safety concerns students are seeing right now. Next, we went to architects and planners who had worked on school campuses before. They've given us a comprehensive plan to build out high quality instruction in high quality facilities. At the same time, we listened to the community and are ensuring that the campus's historic nature is protected and that deaf and blind students still learn in separate classrooms tailored to their specific needs. There will be further discussions on this journey about funding, construction, and more. But I'm standing here with this bipartisan group of lawmakers and advocates to send a clear message. Arkansas is going to keep its promise and we are going to fix these schools. To begin, we will invest significant resources to build a new state-of-the-art facility on the current campus, combine administrative functions, and provide additional high-quality instruction on a regional basis. And we're going to prioritize student safety and happiness so that ASD and ASB will thrive as they were intended to right here in the heart of our capital city. I'll now turn it over to Rob, Robert Fagan, Chairman of the Schools Board, to offer further details on our work, and we'll come back up to take questions shortly. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you, Governor. Governor, it is so wonderful on this Valentine's Day of 2024 that you and Secretary Oliva and his staff from the Department of Ed and Arkansas legislators are giving the School for the Blind and School for the Deaf a huge gift of love on this Valentine's Day. <laughs> <clears throat> I truly believe after having our meeting yesterday 
there was a strong commitment from everyone to love these schools and to give give back to them. You know, our schools are old. They were built in the late 1800s, early 1900s. I've heard stories of using duct tape and paper clips to fix things around there. So it's, it's a tremendous gift uh, that, and I see a bright future for the school. Um, I see a school state of the art. Uh, we want to keep our kids safe. We want to give them the best education uh, that we possibly can. And I truly believe that our legislatures and the Department of Ed and the governor are committed to seeing this thing through. And it's just an awesome day for the students who are blind and visually impaired in the state of Arkansas. So again, Governor, thank you very much. What a happy day. I'm Representative Charlene Fight, and I want to say thank you, thank you to the Governor and to Secretary Oliva and to their staffs for all of the hard work that has gone into this. They have found a way to provide an excellent state-of-the-art facility for our students while also preserving the historical and cultural home for so many citizens of the state of Arkansas who are deaf or visually impaired. And I'm so thankful for this. I have prayed for this day, hoped for this day, and worked for this day for many, many years. And now it's happening, and I'm over the moon. Thank you. Hi, I'm Carrie Smith. This is my husband, Patrick Smith, and this is our son, Griffin. You want to stand right here? Griffin's a second grade student at the School for the Blind, and he's been there since he was three years old. And he was two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> Sorry. And we are so grateful that the attention has been given to the schools because we believe in the education of blind and visually impaired and deaf and hard of hearing um, individuals. And we are so grateful for the opportunity to the, for the school to improve. Um, we know it can be better. And we have the people and the educators in place. Now we just gotta update the structure. So we're really excited. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. This is an exciting day. We've, we've been working with this school for just over a year to talk about how can we increase opportunities? How can we make sure our students are supported? And how can we get better outcomes? And if anybody has spent any time on the campus at the School of Deaf and Blind, you will learn really quickly that we have some of the most passionate, dedicated staff members and leaders that are going above and beyond with very minimal resources to reach and achieve those goals. And what I appreciate about our governor, the legislature, the board, the staff and the families is that we're going to make sure as we go through this process from taking a concept and putting it into a plan of action that we get it right. And we're going to be including stakeholders and listening to the experts in those schools each and every single day. There is no reason that this can't be the flagship program that makes all the other states say this is the state that did it right. How do we make our programs in our states just as good as theirs? And what I really appreciate about our, our governor, when, when she says she's going to be the Arkansas governor, and we rolled out bold, comprehensive educational reforms that are going to trans, transform teaching and learning here in the state, and we're looking at everything in Arkansas Learns from early learning to K-12, career technical education pathway, pathways, post-secondary attainment, making sure that every student in the state of Arkansas has an opportunity to excel beyond their wildest dreams this campus is part of that conversation and we're going to achieve just that so congratulations governor legislature thank you for your support we look forward to rolling up our sleeves and beginning to implement this wonderful plan
Thank you, Jacob. And with that, we'll open up and be happy to take a few questions. Samantha. <laughs> So I'll take the first question on timeline as soon as possible. Um, we've been given a couple different estimates, but like Secretary Oliva said, we want to get it right. Uh, but we want to do this as quickly as possible so students can start uh, learning in a new facility and have access to the best uh, facility possible. And so we plan to get started very quickly um, and we're going to move as, as fast as possible. On the funding, there's already been uh, roughly $30 million that's set aside from the legislature in 2021. And you can see by the demonstration of support right here, we have a shared commitment to make sure that this project is seen through to its completion. Sure. <laughs> So there would certainly the, the plan is, and there's no reason to deviate, that each the Arkansas School for the Deaf and the Arkansas School for the Blind will have their own, building, own buildings uh, on campus, but there will be some shared services uh, like the dining hall, some of the administrative services would be shared instead of separated as they are now so that we can have uh, greater efficiency and better serve the student population. Sure. We would like to see one superintendent that would focus on the administrative and operation side and then each school to have uh, their own principal that would focus on the specific instruction and help protect the culture of each of the two communities. And I'd be happy, uh, Robert, I don't know if you want to, if you have anything to add on that front. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the existing dormitory facilities we feel like are, after the assessment uh, from architects and contractors, the existing dorms uh, may have some upgrades, but wouldn't be a rebuild uh, or, or new construction. So that happened um, over the last several months. There was uh, significant damage to one of the health facilities on campus. And so that uh, the two schools already have now a shared health facility, um, but it is not up to standard. And so there will be a new health facility that would be shared by both campuses uh, on the new campus once that's completed. Great, thank you all so much for being here. Appreciate it.